Chapter 12 Ethical, Legal, and Social Issues of IT This is Part 2 of 4 Privacy The learning outcomes include Define Privacy Explore U.S. laws that are interpreted in ways that grant the right to privacy. Let's move now to privacy. Many people think privacy is guaranteed in the Constitution and the word privacy is never mentioned in the Constitution. We'll talk about that a little more later. Privacy is a standard definition that many people use, freedom from unauthorized intrusion. So if I don't want people watching me, seeing what I do, getting my information, and I don't give them permission, then they, don't, they aren't allowed to invade my privacy. Another, another definition is the ability of an individual or group to keep their lives out of public view or to control the flow of information. So I shut my door if I don't want you to see inside. I draw my blinds. However, if I'm a public figure, I'm a politician, I'm an actress, an actor, a producer, a reality star, whatever I might be, my expectation of privacy is lower than a normal person like you or me because I have opened myself up to the public through my activities. So I may just assume that people are using a long lens to look into my windows, so I take extra precautions to make sure if I don't want information out there, it's not there. But if people want to try to find out, I have given up some of my privacy by being a public figure. As an employee, you also have to protect the privacy of the stakeholders within your company. You have to make sure your company is following all applicable, law, applicable laws using appropriate technology to protect the privacy of your stakeholders, publishing privacy policies that yes, none of us probably ever read those long, detailed privacy policies, but they're there if you ever want to know, and the company has done its due diligence by publishing them. And then yes, you are legally bound by those. If you click on I agree, a reasonable person would assume you had read it. There are limits on the governmental and business access to personal information, an organization should only collect and, and, and maintain and look at personal information that we've been given authorization to do so. Government, including legal agencies, should only look at data if they have a right to, a reason to. As people try to breach our protections and gain access to our stakeholder information, we have to be vigilant and we have to use the latest technology to make sure we are protecting the privacy of our stakeholders. Here's where we get to where people argue that privacy is implied in the U.S. Constitution. It varies in other countries. The First Amendment is one you hear, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, um, the freedom to assemble and to make your views known. So this is Americans' right to freedom of religion, expression, and freedom to assemble. If data is being gathered, to try to track people, what they're doing, who they're talking with, when they're doing it, etc. Their people have a right to freedom of expression and should not have to worry about government interference. However, the First Amendment does not protect all speech. If I 
yell fire in a crowded theater is the example you most often hear. I have expressed my speech, but it's in a manner that has caused people to run and injure each other. So if I have speech that, may, that causes harm or that could cause harm, then my First Amendment rights aren't guaranteed. These rights are only guaranteed to U.S. citizens. The Fourth Amendment is the other privacy-related part of the Constitution that people refer to. And here, you protect people from unreasonable search and seizure of property. You, that we didn't want, back when the Revolutionary War was going on, the Americans did not want the, the British to be able to come in and seize their property and use it for housing, um, quartering soldiers, or feeding soldiers, or coming in and searching without probable cause. If data is gathered without a good reason, getting a warrant where a judge says that, yes, there is a good reason to gather this data, then it may be a violation of our Fourth Amendment rights. Again, this applies to Americans in the U.S., although some argue it may apply to Americans in other countries. For instance, some Americans who may have joined groups like ISIS it's, it's questionable whether or not the U.S. Constitution and the rights guaranteed by it apply to them. And I encourage you to read more about that if you're interested. There may be some additional privacy protections in state constitutions, but don't count on it. If there is no mention in a state constitution or if the state constitution conflicts with the federal, the U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Constitution is the one that is considered the law of the land, so it will supersede state constitutions if they're in conflict. However, the U.S. Constitution does not prohibit states from providing additional protections within the, within the scope of the U.S. Constitution. I encourage you at this point to pause the PowerPoint presentation and take a look at a short video on a federal appeals court which ruled that the NSA phone data collection was illegal, where they were gathering data on many people, not referring to it unless they had a reason, but they had it. Oftentimes it may have been metadata, who you talk to, when you talk to them, who they talk to, when they talk to people, and so on but they gathered the data in case they needed to review it later. This has been declared illegal recently, but I'm sure we'll see more court decisions involving this data collection. And Edward Snowden, you can read about him. He's the one that brought some of this to light. I'm sure you know Edward Snowden. Now let's talk about data brokers. And these are people or companies that create profiles on other people. They get data from public records in many cases, like arrest records, registration in certain industry directories or magazines or online social media, and any other public records, like if you bought a house and you own any type of property. So much of this is very legal, but it's a, a method of understanding people better that then may be sold to others. A related topic is something called doxing. And this is when someone gives you information about another person trying to inconvenience them. I'll give you an example. Donald Trump gave out Lindsey Graham's phone number, his real cell phone number, and said, call him. That was a strategic outing. It was probably not illegal because he had the phone number, but he was trying to inconvenience him. In more nefarious cases, you may have someone contact you and say, I have all this information about you and I'm going to release it unless you pay me something or give me something in return. For instance, Ashley Madison, 
recently, which is a website that tries to allow married individuals to hook up with other people. A website, it was a, a website or is a website that does that, and someone went in, got the information of all the people who were, had registered accounts, learned more about them from those registered accounts, even if it wasn't their real name, and said, we will release this information unless you pay us a ransom. Ashley Madison did not pay a ransom, and the names were released. I encourage you at this point to pause the PowerPoint presentation and take a look at a 60-minute short video on data brokers and online tracking. To summarize, the right to privacy is not explicitly guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution. However, people interpret privacy rights from the first freedom of speech and fourth freedom from unlawful search and seizure amendments to the U.S. Constitution. Privacy laws across the world vary widely. If you're working in a global organization, it's imperative that you acquire international legal expertise.